So, and this is the fourth uh, subtask in task two of the assignment one of unit four, and it is about um, air. Um, he lost through through air. Now, I got this room, and I'm going to give this room some measurements. I'm going to make this room three meters tall. 5 meters long and 4 meters wide. Now, um, we want to change the, the air inside the room. We don't want, we need to renew it because it becomes after a while stale. And in a normal house, it would be a matter of, of um, just opening the windows and then the air will come in and and some air will come out. That is what we're doing. We are rotating the the air inside the room. Now um, what's happening here is let's say we are inside the room and we got the temperature inside the room like 19 degrees which is a comfortable it's a comfortable temperature for a for a room to be. Now, let's say outside we got a temperature of minus one degree, which is normal winter day in UK, and this air is coming in, it's cold, and then this air that is coming out is already heated at 19 degrees. But this air comes in, it's cold, needs to be heated to rise to be rise, um, to this temperature now we're going to have heat loss because of that and that's in a normal house because that's the way it is in an office ideally you will have like a heat recovering system where the temperature of the air coming out will heat the air coming in before it enters. If they don't mix, it's just like a coil where you the, 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 um, the conduit to bring the cold air in goes past a coil of air coming out. So you're not going to have this air minus one degree coming inside the room at 19 degrees already but if it is five degrees or if it is 12 degrees whatever you manage to rise this temperature is uh saving in 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 energy because you don't have to use the heating inside the building to do that anyway that's just anecdotic it has nothing to do with uh, exercise, but you have been told what is a heat recovering system where you exchange the temperature of the air coming out with the air coming in, in order to save energy. Saying that, the first thing we need to know is the how the air is, um, is changed. So if we have a rate of one 0.5 let's say um, meter cubic per hour and then we mm, we need to first the first thing is work out the volume of the the volume of the room And well, that's easy. We need to times the height, times the width, times the the length. And I'm going to do this with the calculator. It could be done on the head, but I want to show you. So it's three times five times four equals 60 cubic meters. 
Now, another thing I want to do is to calculate the temperature difference. Now, I'm going to put So the temperature difference is what temperature is in the house, 19 degrees, and then I want to see what difference is between the temperature outside. And I can tell the temperature is 20 degrees. If you don't believe me, deduct 1 from 20 and you will have 19. Okay? So that is the temperature difference and I'm going to write it here and it's 20 degrees now you need to know the volumetric uh, heat specifics of the of the air and the air has the following is 1300 and that is uh, joules per meter cubic Kevin so that's joules um, with that I think we are set up to to do the, the exercise now it's as simple as multiplying the volume 60 times the volumetric specific heat then the exchange rate and times the um, temperature difference which is 20 so this is the volume of the room, which we have calculated here. Uh, this is given. So you use this figure for your assignment. 1300 joules um, meter cube Kevin. Then this rate has been given to you in your assignment and I think is 1.35. In this exercise is 1.5. And then you got the temperature difference in this case is 20 degrees in your exercise you need to look at the temperature difference once you do that you are going to multiply this and i'm going to do it in this calculator now so i cannot say it's 16 um, times 1300 times 1.5 times 20 and that equals an astronomic figure 2, 3, 4 followed by ok so it's like 2 million but that's joules and that's what has been lost in one hour. Now, we want to spread this in watts. And watts is a unit of power. And one joule and one watt is equal to one joule per second. Okay? Now, this is joules that have been lost in an hour and we want to do it in seconds so how many seconds are there in an hour well so we got one hour which is equal to 60 minutes and we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute so what if we multiply 60 times 60, what's going to happen? Well, 6 times 6 is 36. And I got two zeros. I got that in an hour. I'm going to write it here again. One hour equals 3,600 seconds. So, 
if I have all these millions uh, joules in an hour, how many are there I will have in a second? Well, let's find out. Two, three, four, zero, 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 divided by three, six, zero, zero. I'm going to get rid of these two zeros and I'm going to use the calculator for this. And I'm going to write it. So it's two, three, four, zero, zero, and divided by 36, which equals 650 watts. Now, it looks to me like a little bit high, but this is how it's done. In your book, you have, I mean, in your assignment, you have a different um, different figures. I will need you to produce a drawing like this. I will need you to make a list of the different concepts. I will need you to apply the formula and then this joules per hour to be um, converted into watts, which are joules per second. And then you will give me an answer that will be highlighted and marked as the answer. Check your figures. I don't know if I done it well. It looks to me like this is a massive figure for this amount of um, numbers, but maybe I enter 15 in one, instead of 1.5. I don't know. I really don't care because... I'm not doing a real life exercise and just teaching you how to answer an assignment question and to understand what's going on. And this is the end of this tutorial.